Up next, we have uh, Steve Hauser from Iowa State to talk special teams. Welcome, Coach. How we doing, guys? Thanks for having me. Um, I got from Coach Gum the other day, so I'm, I'm filling in for Zach Barton. But it's kind of a little bit open-ended, so even when I was listening to everybody, I, I kind of took some slides and, and just screenshotted them into this presentation, so hopefully I can kind of draw over the top and you know, everyone can get the gist. Just so you guys know, like, my biggest goal for this 15-minute presentation is, like, one, to stay on time. Hopefully that will happen. But the other thing would be to give you guys as many different drill looks as you can so you can take something with you. Everyone's got their scheme and how they operate things, but this is just kind of how we structure ours. I'm going to stick mostly to kickoff, um, maybe a few punt return drills that we do because sometimes I feel like those edge positions, you know, whoever's running a special teams unit for your team, most of the time they're worried about the, the core guys in the box on punt, punt return, or they're worried about the front line blocks of kick return, kickoff. So sometimes those gunners, jammers, and returners, maybe you're putting one of your other coaches on them that you trust, but the drills and that stuff can get repetitive sometimes. So I think it's important to, to really coach those guys and make sure you trust the people that are doing that. So I'm going to pull up this kickoff deal just because it kind of fit the circuit title that um, was on Zach's presentation. So. I'm going to do some kickoff presentation here, share this, hopefully this all goes. We've been running our presentations on Google Hangouts, so this is my first Zoom, but can everybody see this? Yep, you're good to go, Coach. Cool, thanks guys. This is my contact information. Um, please feel free to hit me up um, with whatever comes up. Today I'm just going to talk some organization, organization stuff, our base align and assign, and then as many drill examples as I can fit in. If we do have a little bit of time, I'd like to show you the punt returner stuff, but if not, um, you guys can hit me up and we can talk through that separately. This is our fall camp install. This was just from our staff meeting. So uh, my role is a quality control role. So I'm behind the scenes. Uh, we'll meet in the mornings a lot to go over with. Um, we have a lead coach for each phase. Coach Campbell meets with the whole staff and myself and we kind of lay out everything um, from QC to position coach, then position coach uh, and full staff and then to the players. So there's a lot of layers that go through before the, the players hear this stuff. And Coach Campbell's big thing on fall camp install is preview, review, and then execute. So any of our um, layouts for a fall camp practice, we're going to have a meeting, we'll have a walkthrough, we'll do lunch, we'll come back, we'll do a, a five-minute OD walk before practice and then hit it in practice. So even just the sequence of, of this, you'll kind of see our skill circuit, which kind of teaches our base, you know, by body type, what you'd be doing on any given kickoff rep. And then we'll do a um, compete, you know, box drill like everyone in the country will do just to see who wins in a competitive situation. We'll actually put guys in their positions and they'll rep pods, kind of like micro looks of what they'll do, taking a lot of the running out. Then we'll start at that point building in the 11 versus air or 11 versus 11 group coverage fits. But um, I, we do all of our installs in Excel just so you can sort it by phase, um, the time allotments. I, I think one of the things we do that, that's good, Coach Campbell wants us all to be able to do our drills um, in different tempos. So like based off of the workload of, um, we have, we're fortunate to have the catapult system. Um, if you guys feel like, hey, it's gonna be 95 out, and we already maxed these guys out yesterday, like we gotta take it all down a notch, like everything in our library should be indexed so that we can plug and play a different drill. Um, just coaching assignments, again, that stuff's important for me to layer out because special teams is all I do here at Iowa State. So I'm with our specialists and then any core units. Um, our left side would be the point of attack side. So our tight ends coach and linebackers are there. Our defensive coordinator has a specialist background from his playing days. So he works with those guys on the field. And then our field side is more of our light speed guys. So our corners and our safeties coach. Um, obviously the defensive GAs, just because you got kind of your quarterback guy, your O-line guy, they're not really available for this. Um, so again, anybody who can help, all that stuff's pre-drawn, obviously. Our alignments, just again, align, assign. Our L1 is going to be on that red line below the, the bottom of the numbers and the ticks there to the sideline. Our two and our three will vice the numbers. And then our four and the five will vice the logo. The logo is that divide magical area between the top of the numbers and the hash there. Um, in special teams, I think it's really important, whether you're educating your staff or even the kids of what the width of the field landmarks are so that you can space your drills out appropriately to create some situations that are beneficial that, you know, like kick return wall stuff. We usually don't start by putting those guys on the 50 and tell them to drop to the 30. We're going to drop from the side, from the ticks, all right, to the width of the numbers 
so that we get a feel for where a straight line is. So we're always running on lines, just like you do on uh, tracks, O-line, tight end, Indy. So these guys understand a straight line is a straight line. Then we put them kind of in the big ocean in the field of play. So that's our boundary side there. Our kicker can put the ball anywhere from the hash to the near upright. Those guys are finicky, so wherever they can be most comfortable. Um, Sometimes we're on a grass field, so at the end of the year, the, the hash is kind of beat to hell, um, no matter how, how good they try to keep that thing set up so our r5 and more so these field guys are going to be based off of their leverage to the ball um, these boundary guys are pretty static we're going to read returns we're going to beat leverage try to get them to back on where we're going and get to the ball north south as fast as possible these guys to the field in the next diagrams you'll see um, it's more assignment rather than alignment this is like a baseball camp deal but this r5 is going to keep everything on his inside shoulder the R4 is going to nose the football. He should be folding off of this cutter here. And then the middle fit guy will play at a level. So there's times where you'll see our field kickoff, and they'll be in a stacked vertical line, these three guys. We still have a firm field edge no matter what. He's keeping it a firm box here. If he sees this player cut the field, that interior contain, he can fold to the near hip and add into bounce turn and then this r1 is going to be we say all 21 guys have to be in front of you he's a third level fitter i think one of the, and really you can see this from the next slide here as well um, i've got ahead of myself but the five and the four are going to be on the uprights here the threes on the hash two and one again are vicing the logo that middle ground between the top of the numbers and the hash here's kind of that diagram of what i just laid out verbally here um, pretty standard into the boundary. We're going to box anything to a wedge here. Um, this guy will be seven by three. We, we talk about fits would be a second level fitter. And then safeties are third level leverage players. Everybody else is, is a first level ball player. Um, into the boundary here, you'll see our drills. Most important thing is those guys, whether they have to two, two gap, a single block, or they have to get front to back. Again, it's just like kick return wall. That stuff's like transition basketball we have to go take it to the hoop. Like we should be playing with a downhill intent the whole time. And then to the field, we'll get a little bit more uh, disruption, hopefully by crossing these guys. And then they understand that leverage to the ball at the end of the day, rather than in their original path. So we don't talk about lanes at all. Um, we don't talk about butt side at all because all of our avoids are going to be pre-fit by their assignment. Um, I don't, I'm not going to talk too much scheme, but I think that does help of how we're ID and body types. Um, as we get into our drill work. Justin, if there's any questions that come up, it's not on my screen. So if you got anything, guys, just holler and um, I'll get it communicated the best I can. So this is our skip mm -hmm. circuit. This is the very first thing that we'll do um, in regards to kickoff. I'll start up here. This would be our, our boundary and point of attack bodies. So this is our avoid station. It doesn't matter if a receiver DB comes through or a linebacker tight end, they're going to work avoid based on their personality. So the only guys that do this double team avoid stuff are going to be like our um, L3, L4, L5 bodies. So select D line, tight ends, and backers. All right, well, hell, the receivers and DBs are the next group to rotate there. They're going to come do single block avoids to the field. So I know that who can uncover and get from front to back. These other stations are pretty universal, regardless of body type that we'll get into. This is a really good leverage station, just a force fill and pursue. It's awesome to see offensive guys rep that. And then the second station here uh, with our linebackers coach is going to be a hat in hand, shock and shed, um, fit off of a rabbit returner, which is we involve our specialists so that we get extra bodies um, in that regard. Generally, we have seven minutes to do these three stations. So it will be two minutes at each station and 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds in transition time. When you do this, it's crucial to have a walkthrough period pre-practice or pre-stretch to make sure the guys, because we're humming now when they go around this, um, and our guys are usually pretty gassed by the end of this, so it's really good to get on tape. Um, again, these are all still shots. Just hopefully I can draw on this so there's no lag. So we'll get two lines. Again, this is 20 yards from the hash to the sidelines over here, so we're taking a lot of the air out with this. These two lines will go simultaneously. This is working against a post, someone stopping you running north-south here in a pin double team. Other people will say drive. This is east-west trying to pin this guy into the middle of the field. All right, so we're always gonna stress the pin player 
and work to split this. Obviously, last year in college, they got rid of the 50-50 vice. Either way, we're going to stress this thing to the return side. So 90% or whatever you want to say the percentages are, we're going to assume it's a boundary return. We'll read out of it with indicators and things like that. Any single block to the boundary air guys will hat in hands and find the returner gaining ground the whole time with eyes on the returner. But this is a obviously most teams are going to have a double team here. We'll stress this lateral, this pin player, because if we run to him, he's going to stop his feet and neutralize. This guy's got to adjust anyway. So we're hoping to find daylight, stick, dip our shoulder, and then replace our line once we get back on that. So we'll say, Hey, stress the pin, stick, dip your shoulder, replace your line so we get back vertical. That's where you'll see these coaches with the plyo balls here. They'll roll that out once these guys win off of the hand shield. They're not messing with these pop-up bags at all. Um, I mean, I've heard guys say we put our linemen there and we give them a water break and they just, you know, harass the guys with the water or whatever it is. They're not doing anything with these guys if you don't want to move the heavy bags. It's really important these guys understand they're running off one guy and they got to get thin through the thing and split it. And then we'll low high, all right, um, near foot, near shoulder tackle these plyo balls. Now, when you're coaching these guys, rolling them out, whoever this is, injured guys, um, extra bodies, whoever you got, these things should be rolled vertically because these guys are L3. And I'm just talking like left, deep, left, classic stuff. The return alley is going to be vertical. If these things are rolled over here, they're rolling it to the cheerleaders out of bounds. So, like, I think that's different from the point of attack boundary stuff versus when we get to the skill guys, that station's just over here. That ball should be rolled wider because I'm a field guy tracking from the field. I got to bend back negative towards a boundary return. Does that make sense, everybody? So, right now, we're just talking point of attack, um, thicker bodies going through here. So, that's our avoid station when those guys roll through here. Again, we're rolling counter or just rolling clockwise here with our rotations. Now we'll talk the avoid versus just a single block leverage here. Again, these guys are to the field. They don't know anything about scheme yet. They just know I have to get, I'm in front of this guy. I have to find the fastest way to get behind him and then fit the football. I think it's important for you guys to see in the video would show this, but again, with this world the way it is right now, uh, it's tough to get that thing clean, especially on like technique drill tape stuff, in my opinion. So this guy, all right, if I'm repping this block right here, the coach would be five yards to the return side, and he's going to roll that plyo ball the same way that we near foot, near shoulder, low hips, raising our hands and eyes all the way through. So these guys get a little bit of a tackling work. All right, we're going to get there. But again, it's a boundary return. So these balls are going to be rolled wider. So hey, I'm either taking a return side avoid because we're assuming it's a boundary return based off of our indicators. All right, if that guy has leverage inside of me, I got to take the long way around, all right, dip and drive, speed, um, whatever you guys butts are, you know, the long way around, run the hoop, whatever you want to say. It's important for those guys to now get negative and chase that ball because they took the long way around. We got to dip and drive and fight the pressure to that return side. Um, in the, like a drill example sense, I'd say this is a better representation of what we're trying to get. So you have your coach here, a one-by-one -one thing off of where the player is on this line. So if I'm the player, this coach stays on, as we're seeing it, the left side of this line. I know it's a boundary return. I'm taking grass right now and going across his face, and I'm going towards the football. Because, again, the shortest distance between two paths is going to be a straight line to that boundary return. All right, this coach cuts me off. All right, I can't go that way. Same way as kick return, you're thinking, hey, taking a charge, like it's transition defense in basketball, right? This guy now has to go around. We'll call that a speed move because we're running the hoop, fight it with speed, dip and drive off of this hand shield that you see better in this coach's representation, but they're still getting negative towards the ball. So this is versus a field assignment, single block. Um, we'll talk individual double teams to the field if it comes up in a game plan, but we're not going to have those guys concentrate on that in fall camp. This is an eval drill for me. It's who can react, who can twitch. Um, who can reduce their pad level and then understands that it's still a boundary return and I have to get to the football. So these are our two avoid stations. Again, Justin, Drew, if anybody has questions, please just holler at me and I'll, I'll stop because it's hard to stop the video. I'm kind of drawing it on the fly here. So this is our leverage station. You'll see a stack of three right here. Again, these are um, backup running backs and safeties. 
we'll push these guys in a direction once these guys declare through the heavy bags. Again, these heavy bags, it's the same thing. Like to whatever dead weight you want to put there, give the O-line a water break, whatever you want to do. So this first guy on coaches set go, he can pick any bag. He just can't run straight. Everybody else, all right, so again, I cannot pick straight. I go that way. Okay, the second guy, he can come avoid off this bag. This guy's here. Well, Christ, if this guy's going to press to the boundary or wherever he wants to go, the first player to the ball is a force player. The second player is a fill player. They're both just near foot, near shoulder to the near hip where the ball declares. And now this guy is going to chase the level of the ball and take an over-the-top pursuit angle. But he cannot do that until it goes to the force player, right? Because, again, the cutback, making sure that he's staying home because he could have to be the force player as well. So, for instance, say this guy runs this way. Well, our guy chose that, and then we're here, and then we're here. Well, he's got to now close ground and take the air out of it, correct? The last thing we want to do, even if there's a lot of space, first guy goes over here, second guy's coming here. Well, there's maximum space over here. This guy's got to keep closing ground because even if this thing spills out, he's going to go east-west. We'll have time to take our defensive pursuit drill angles to find the football. What we do not want to happen in this drill, again, one, two, three, all comes here. What cannot happen is this guy stress and widen and flat foot this thing and this thing goes fast north south before the fill players there and there's not enough of an angle for the pursuit player to get over the top so there's a lot of natural situations that come up we're never telling anyone to spill the football on kickoff I know a lot of teams are we're a little bit more like old school into the boundary on that sense um, but there are times where you know I'm just going to draw something here on a kick return we're on kickoff we're setting a hard edge we're going to tell this guy to condense the return and collapse this return alley, correct? So there's a time, well, this return is being told to read the play side hip on a boundary return. He could say, holy shit, coach, this guy got pushed back into my lap. I went to the boundary. Well, the sidelines over here, we still got a second level player to now vice tackle with the sidelines, even though we're never telling this guy to spill blocks. Just by his hat and hands in collision, this guy could chop his feet. And again, the ball spills out. We'll have guys at levels. It's the same thing that can happen in this force fill pursuit drill. Again, this is a great rep for, for offensive guys, running backs, receivers who haven't done open air tackling or understand what leverage is. Um, our safeties coach does a great job with this drill, so I'm pretty hands off um, in the explanation part. Um, it's just a good team football drill. <laughs> Lastly, it would be our long stride station. I think um, something that's important I was at Oklahoma State before I was at Iowa State and Coach Gundy and people are talking about come to balance and shimmy and all this stuff of how to fit the ball at that moment of truth. He's like, how does an 18 year old know what shimmy means? He's like, there's two ways to do something. You can have long strides or short strides. So like you're chunking up ground and you're trying to go through somebody or you have to compress that area. All right. Because you're too far away. It's like being in phase or out of phase. Like I can't look to the ball if I'm out of phase out hey I'm in phase I can make a play on the ball to keep like an offense defensive analogy for these guys I'm now in short stride I now have to naturally come to a base where I'm going to near foot near shoulder tackle and that's a whole different um, diagram where our defensive coordinator gets up and will explain team tackling in a team meeting setting um, but we'll call this long stride our hat and hands shock and shed drill um, very similar to what a lot of people do we'll rep all three of these guys at once but the key coaching points on a long stride is, again, our hairline should be on his chin line, all right? We want to be driving vertical for five. We want to have knee drive. We should see our knees coming up, and my eye should be on the returner. My hand should be on the blocker, and my feet should be in the ground. Like, if we're wide and high, then we're done. Like, we're not gaining ground. It doesn't matter how long we can two-gap. They're eating up yards in the return. So one of the things I've heard from another coach is when you're seeing through the via this man's neck to the football, to the football, you should be seeing through the fence slots, right? Think of like home improvement. Like none of the players will understand that, but I think you guys will. There's the guy looking over the fence and he's like peeking around, but he's, there's no way he's driving. Correct. Like there's no way you can be long striding when you're peeking over the fence. If your eyes are through the fence posts, your feet, 
are in the ground, your hands are on your man, your eyes are on the ball. So um, I think another good way to do this drill and take, because I mean, again, this will wear these guys out. And I think our linebackers coach does a really good job of kind of having these guys take a step forward, surrender their chest and take their heads out of this. It's a five yard fit. All right. So it's a five yard progress. We're driving for five. And then when these guys get five, we're having, again, a GA release these specialists. And he's saying, all right, you guys are all going to the right. And then we'll buzz tackle and just buzz their hip to the near hip right here. Um, it's a pretty well, well drilled. This circuit's been good to us for a long time before I got here to Iowa State. Um, I think it gets everybody involved. And on a kickoff standpoint, it gives you the base qualities to get from that 65 yards of the starting point to where the returner is, no matter what the situation is. You got boundary guys working on double team defeats. You got your field guys working on avoids. Um, the whole team's learning how to leverage the football and bottle that up. Um, and then hat and hands, destruction, offhand rip, all that good stuff. There's some other stuff here. Just this is how we lay out our box drill. Uh, it's pretty standard from what everyone in the country does. We'll have a kick return guy drop in from five yards, flip his hips, protect. Now we'll have two disc cones back here, which I think is good. It takes that big heavy bag where you're worried about guys, you know, getting tangled up or whatever comes up. Uh, hopefully it takes some of the injury out of it. And it also gives a clear win loss. That kick kickoff guy runs through those cones and he wins. If you shield him outside, hell or high water, uh, you get that competitive rep. And this is a, a highly competitive matched out deal. Coach Campbell does the timing of this drill, so we're not blowing anybody out. Sometimes like he'll say, like, if it's a starting linebacker and a tight end into the boundary, like, hey, you guys already did it once. It was an awesome rep. You guys are out. Let's get the you know guys who are competing for these spots in week six some more action. Um, to the field, we had more of a drop-in angle. So if you think, again, left, deep, left, these guys are going to have to understand they have to cut off leverage. It's the same drill as these guys just went through in the circuit, right? I have to press that kick side hip. If he takes off my path, cuts off my path, I got to beat it around the hoop. If that guy undersets, then I can take an angle to the returner right now. And again, we're finishing through these two cones. Um, I think that's all I have for time. That's our skill circuit. Um, I think you guys can see this up here. During this time, like our punt returners and kick returners, they exclusively work with our receivers coach, and that's all they do on special teams. So we're, we're fortunate that we got a lot of guys doing a lot of different things, um, but that way they're always getting that coaching and ball security, and there's different, you know, gadgets and drills you can keep their attention span. Um, but I think that's been good to us, too, of those guys major and, and what's most important, and that's the ball. So I'll kind of turn it over to questions from there. Um, I, there's plenty I could talk for days in this stuff because I'm kind of in my own little world at times. I'm an offensive guy at heart, so it's been awesome to hear you guys talk some ball. Appreciate it. Coach, is there a way that we can get film on that? Yeah, I, this, is, this is literally kind of like a hacksaw version of what the real presentation is. Like, okay. there's um, clips and game examples and the whole thing if you guys want. I just didn't want to junk up with the lag. Yeah, if you want to, I mean, you can like email it to me and then I can add it to the to the other videos when I push them all out too. We can do it that way. Um, up to you, man. Yeah, uh, you and I, we can talk through email on that and I'll talk with our video guy. He's really good. So yep, whether we perfect. put uh, whatever Google Drive and I'm more than happy to. Awesome. Sweet, man. Appreciate Thanks, it. Steve. Thanks, Steve. You got it, guys. Thanks, Thanks for coach. Time.